Let's pray. Loving Father, as we hear your word read and proclaimed, we ask that you illuminate this passage in such a way that we might more fully understand the significance of being in relationship with you. We ask this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. Our scripture this morning is found in the first letter of John. It's found in chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Hear now the word of God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. The fact sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. It's a strange time of year, somewhat like right after Christmas. We have a great time getting ready for Christmas, don't we? Amen. We start right after the sacred holiday, right before it, which is Halloween. Advent is twice as long as we like to recognize it. Soon as, every, soon as Hallmark says it's going to be Christmas, it's Christmas. Christmas is also in July, according to Hallmark Channel. But I digress. But after Christmas, there's a letdown, isn't it? We've got to throw out all those poinsettias. We've got to do all that stuff, try to get all that stuff back in the closet. We don't know how we got it in the, out of the closet. We don't know how we put it in the last time. It's terrible. It really is. And we go, and we say, it's time to take it easy. Easter, we get, start getting ready on Ash Wednesday, and we get ready, and we get ready, and we get ready for those seven weeks. And then Easter comes, and everybody shows up for church. And the next week, A few people show up for church. Last week, the low Sunday wasn't a bad low Sunday. I'll be honest with you. Thank you for coming back. It really was good. It It was more than just me and Alan here. That was great. We have a tendency to want to let go, to say, don't we? We've been busy. We've done all the things we're supposed to do. In some many cases, we have grown in our faith. We've grown in our walk with the Lord. And then, we like sheep go astray. Sometimes, we just nibble along with our head down, minding our own business and never looking up. And the next thing you know, we're on the other side of nowhere and we're by ourselves. We do that spiritually, don't we? Don't we? We do. We are the epitome of that verse in Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. We're prone to to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. We like to sing out. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Now, the people in the 845 service who are really wise people, they did not know what a fetter is. Does anybody here know what a fetter is? It's, just not, it's more than just a word in that verse. Chains. Chains. That's what you want to do. You want to bind like a chain to bind you our wandering hearts. We want to keep those close to God. Because we are prone to wander. We really are. Yes, we are like sheep. And so John is writing this letter to a group of people who have a prone to wander. 
And the, it's not just wandering. They like to take people with them. They want people to go with them as they wander. And John is trying to get them to stop, to understand. You see, what he wants them to clearly understand is that there is a link between belief and behavior. There is. It's hard to believe because it's a whole lot easier to talk about it than do it. Do I have an amen among you? That's what I have found in my life. It's easier to talk about it, but it's another thing to live it. And if you want to see a lot of people talk about it but not live it, watch the news. I'm just saying. Don't throw darts. I'm just saying. We have a tendency to look up to people who talk about it but don't live it. We do. And I, you can take it to the bank. And when we don't connect what we say to what we do, there are people who are, don't go to church, who are outside the church, that they look at us and they call us something. What do they call us? Yes, that's right, hypocrites, hypocrites. And I always want to say, come on and join us, because one more won't hurt us a bit, you know? There's more ways room for one more hypocrite in the church, because that's who we are. We talk about it, but sometimes we don't live it. We truly don't. And then we say to people, do as I say, not as I. And then we go, <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, but I'm not. And so John begins by reminding us of the benefits we have as a follower of Jesus Christ. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that he would call us children of God. How many of you, like me, have been know-it-alls in your life? Is there any young person, 13, 14, 12, who thinks their parents know nothing? How many of us have been that person? I've been that person. Y'all don't know that. Y'all know that. I truly have that, been that person. I, I never really thought my dad had sense to pour water out of a bucket. I really didn't. I'm ashamed to say. And then one day, I had children. And we had children, and I had this daughter who every other week was getting ear infections, and we were taking her to the pediatrician, and they would give us amoxicillin. If y'all remember amoxicillin, we called it bubblegum medicine because it tastes like bubblegum. It, it tastes like bubblegum, and then she would take it for a week or two, and then it would go away, and then he, she'd go back for a checkup, and you'd pay for the checkup, and then you would, she'd get another ear infection the next week, and you'd go back to amoxicillin. We went broke doing that. And then it realized, I realized things that my dad did that I saw all my life but never understood what he was doing. And it brought new meaning to what he did without so that we might have. I understood the depth of his love for me. Too bad I didn't realize this till I was grown. I would have been so much more grateful. We lived in a big house. One side of the house was a florist. My mother and father worked in that florist, ran that florist from about 1952 to 2000 or 1992 or three. On the other side of the house is where we lived with no air conditioning and upstairs. And so this would be, this would be what we go on sometimes. Um, I would go downstairs. My mother would call. We would go downstairs for breakfast on our way to school. And my dad, when I would hit, get down most of the way down the stairs, I would see my dad sitting on the couch asleep, wearing the clothes he wore the night before to supper. I didn't think anything about it. We would eat breakfast. My dad would go uh, 
go take a bath, a shower, and then he would change clothes and he would go to work. What I didn't really realize was that after supper that night, he got up and went into the shop and he would work till six in the morning or whatever it was, making flower arrangements for the funeral that was going to take place that morning. He basically stayed up all night so that we could have breakfast in the morning. I never knew that. I just thought he liked to sleep. And the reality was what he did for me. So when I start thinking about trying to understand God's great love for us, it changes the way you look at who God is and what he did for me. For what my dad did was one thing, but what Jesus did for us is so much more. And all of a sudden, when you come to realize the depth of God's love for us, it changes our response to God, and it changes how we respond to other people. And you come to the point where what we say matters because it is a reflection on how we appreciate who God is and what God has done. Because what we say matters. It truly matters. And the way we behave truly matters. Somebody can ask you what if you would do something for them. And many times... I will say, what's in it for me? Have y'all ever asked, somebody ask you a question and say, will you do this for me? You think, well, what's in it for me? I, you know, if there's nothing in it for me, no, I'm not going to do it. Or it could be, will you do this for me? And I'm saying, who's asking? If the right person asks me, there's a good chance I will say yes. If my wife asks me, there's a good chance I will get around to it <laughs> quicker than I used to. So, the question is, God asks us. He asks us. After he's done all that he's done for us, he asks us for our lives to match, be a loving response to what he's done for us. And we want to say, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? So the question really comes to, that I need to ask, if we're followers of Christ, when was the last time you followed him? And when was the last time someone looked at you and saw Christ? Because they will know that you're mine, that's what Jesus said, by the way you love one another. The way we love one another, the way we do things for one another, that is how people know that we belong to Christ. That our words and our actions actually match. And it matters. There are three things I pray. This is God's spell, but it's really a prayer, a real old prayer. To see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, and to follow thee more nearly day by day. That's what John is asking us to do in our lives, in everything that we do, in everything that we say, that we truly, even though we do not know what Jesus looks like on this side of his return, but when he comes, we will look like him because we have acted like him and lived like him. I hope that all of us, all of us, can have our words and our actions match and so that we point everyone to the one is to come, to Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you have loved us, the way you have poured your love out on the creation. You've poured your love out on 
people in our lives from years ago. You've poured out your love in countless ways, and we are grateful. And we love you, Lord. And we lift our hearts to you. May we be truly a reflection of you to everyone we meet. And may they know that we're yours because of the way we love one another. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.